In this video, I'm going to be climbing a mountain peak called Roundtop, which is located in the Molokumi Wilderness, just south of Lake Tahoe, California. But before I show you the video, there's a couple things that I want to explain, misconceptions that you may have, perhaps, about mountain climbers. You know, when I think about the general public and their perception of mountain climbers, perhaps you think it's all about conquest. You know, images may come to your mind of men rising to the top and planting their flags victoriously on top of snow-capped summits. But make no mistake about it, okay? If you think you are going to plant your flag on top of this earth, when it's all said and done, this earth is going to plant its flag on top of you, okay? Your body is going back into the earth and your atoms are going to be used to make pine trees and grizzly bear and white-tailed deer just like they've been doing for millions of years and they're going to continue doing for millions of years to come in the endless cycle of life and death that is planet Earth that we all coexist on. So for me, mountain climbing has always been much more of a spiritual experience, you know. I've always thought of it more of as a meditation than a sport. And for me, these summits are truly sacred places, places where you can go to cleanse your soul. And you feel in these places a sense, a mixture of power, yet purity. You know, it's a combination of relentless peril, yet breathtaking beauty that keeps drawing us back in. And I also think that these places, they develop in you a sense of gratitude and gratitude for the simple things, you know, things that we all have every day but take for granted, like food, shelter, water, warmth. When was the last time you were grateful for the air that you breathe? Hey, I mean, like when you go to certain parts of the world, like Southeast Asia, for example, they don't have clean air like we do in America. See, the thing is, this is the way the human mind works. You don't actually appreciate something unless you don't have it or if you lose it. For example, you probably never thought about your right toe, but then if you break it, you start thinking about it all the time. All the things that you can't do with your right toe, stand up, balance, walk, drive a car. And I think when you go into these places, you start to notice those things that you wouldn't notice before. and. For me, that's why I keep going back into these places, for the spiritual experience. Even if you're not a spiritual person, I think you still have to agree with me that the spirituality that you feel is just undeniable nonetheless. So I'm going to show you the map here. Um, it's the Molokumi Wilderness map from the USDA. There are other maps that you can get, but this is the one that I use. So um, let's go ahead and uh, take a closer look and I'll show you where I went. All right, so let's take a look at the map here. You're gonna to wanna to take Highway 88 and park your car here at the Ranger Station by Carson Pass. It is a very well-marked trailhead, very large, and it is actually a $5 fee to park your car here. And the fee is something that you have to pay in advance and print out a confirmation online. You can't pay the fee there. Um, it is actually $5 per day or $30 for the snow season. It's called a snow park pass because when I went here, it was winter time. And so the trail actually goes this way, but because it was winter time, I actually cut across and went mostly this way based on my GPS um, coordinates. And by the way, I highly recommend if you're gonna do this in the winter time, you do bring a GPS because, you know, the thing is like, for example, if you're gonna rely on your tracks to find your way back, and th there are lots of landmarks over here that you can, you, you could probably do that just fine, but this whole area is wooded and just in general, um, if you're gonna rely on your tracks to find your way back, you may find, like I found, for example, um, those tracks just weren't there because of the spin drifts and all the wind um, had basically covered them up on the way back. And, and even if you do find tracks, you may find someone else's tracks and they may lead you over here. And, you know, it's a very different experience to be caught out in the wild um, in the wintertime versus the summertime. And that is not something you want to experience being lost in the woods in the wintertime. So that's why I recommend the GPS. Um, anyway, so I went this way and I went to Lake Winnemucca 
And by the way, I think I actually do want to come back here in the summertime and um, go up this ridge here because there is actually a really cool looking ridge, a knife edge ridge that kind of runs along this way. And it does look to be traversable. I didn't find any information online about anyone who's done this ridge before, but it looks very cool. Um, it's a very um, steep looking, it's very steep on the north side in general on Round Top. Um, and then there are three sub peaks here. We'll talk about that in a second. But basically I went this way up this snow slope and you know, personally, I bring crampons and an ax. Um, this was all covered in um, powder snow because this was all like right after there was a really big snow for, snowstorm for the season. Um, so I was actually post holing mostly through this area. And then I put my crampons on and my ax um, for this little snow slope. There's a little bit of a traverse here that I had to do. I don't think any of this stuff is really things that you need crampons or an ax for, but I like to be able to self rest if I take a fall, um, especially being out by myself in the winter time where if I get injured, I'm basically screwed. So basically I went up this way and um, I was actually kind of surprised though because when I got to this ridge, you basically want to make a right or a left as you're looking at it. And um, because you're traversing the south side, um, I was actually surprised that even though there was lots of snow um, all around the area, there was hardly any snow on the ridge itself um, because it's south facing and because you're mostly going to be on the south facing side. And there are three sub peaks here. The farthest right is the summit there is actually a register in the summit. And um, it, it really should not be called round top. It should be called jagged top because it's not round. Um, it's, 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 it's a very jagged ridge line, the whole, the whole thing here. And then it drops down suddenly. And, and this is where that ridge line th th that I wanted to do, uh, I may, I'll probably come back and do it eventually, um, continues along. You can actually do this whole ridge line and continue to this other peak over here. This whole thing is called the sisters. And there's kind of a cool looking sub peak, sub -peak over here. Um, I think there's, there's a lot of um, backcountry skiing opportunities. There's, there's a big couloir here that I saw people skiing down. So there's just like a ton of fun stuff to do in this area. And I'd never really heard of it until recently. So um, it was all new for me. And, I, and I, don't, I don't really spend a lot of time hiking in this area, um, the, like the Lake Tahoe area. So for me, this was like all new stuff. Um, so anyway, I got to the, the summit of Round Top. It, it was mostly snow free. I wore my crampons because I thought there was gonna be more snow. Um, I don't think you need them. The terrain here is fairly straightforward. It's like class two stuff um, and it's nothing too tricky. Um, the main obstacle I encountered was the wind and the cold um, because of this because of the winter time um, season that I did it in. And then I went back the same way I came. Um, I did find again that my tracks were covered. So that was kind of something I had to deal with. But my GPS was, uh, you know, very handy to, to find my way home. Um, I started around seven, I think. And I got back to the car at about 4 p.m., which is a little bit late, um, but I was actually, I've actually been recovering from an injury, so this was my first time back on the trail um, in a few months, actually. All right, so here's our first look at Round Top the objective for the day. All right, so it's December 19th, 2021, and I just started the hike up to Round Top today. I'm actually wearing micro spikes today. I'm hoping that I'll be able to get up the whole thing with just micro spikes, but I did bring uh, crampons and an ax, which I think I'll probably need for the top section. Here's a look at Round Top from Lake Winnemucca, which is frozen over. And I'm gonna be heading up the right side there.
reach the top of this snowfield and then make a left.
I am ready to head home. What an exhausting hike.